the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning. Welcome to our celebration. We come before our God with the recognition of our need for God's mercy and grace, and with a humble and contrite heart, we pray. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my sisters and brothers, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. For my fault, for my fault, for my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my sisters and brothers, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Return, rebellious children, says the Lord, for I am your master. I will take you, one from the city, two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. I will appoint you, appoint over you shepherds after my own heart, who will shepherd you wisely and prudently. When you multiply and become fruitful in the land, says the Lord, they will say in those days, no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. They will no longer think of it or remember it or miss it or make another. At that time, at that time they will call Jerusalem the Lord's throne and there all nations will be gathered together to honor the name of the Lord at Jerusalem and they will walk no longer in their hard-hearted wickedness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will guard us as the shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as the shepherd guards his flock. <clears throat> Hear the word of O Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant isles and say he who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the land of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessing. The grain, the wine, the oil, the sheep, the oxen. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men as well, and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden, gladden them after their sorrows. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Hear the parable of the sower. 
The seed sown on the path is the one who fears, who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. This is one of the few instances where Jesus actually explains uh, one of his parables. And this is uh, the parable of the sower. The parable was given, was given a couple of days ago. Actually, we didn't read it uh, this, this, this week. Uh, but it comes, it comes um, before the explanation. And between the, the parable and the explanation, there is an intermission. And in the intermission is when the disciples come to Jesus and ask him why he speaks to the people in parables. So Jesus uh, explains to them, this is the gospel actually that we heard yesterday. And today Jesus gives the explanation. Now the parable itself, in the parable, the emphasis or the focus is on the sower. Yet on the explanation of the parable, the emphasis seems to be on the different kinds of soil where the seed falls. The seed in this parable is, is the word of God, the word that is sown in our lives, in our hearts. Now, in the explanation, we can break it down into four different kinds of soils, and we can say there are different kinds of people that respond to the word. But we can also interpret it as uh, four steps in the process of actually being drawn into the kingdom, being drawn into the way of life that God reveals to us in and through Christ. So the first kind of soil, the soil that is very compact and hard because it is the soil that is on the path where people just walk over it and with the pressure of people walking over it just um, press it down and the seed has no way no way to go deep into the soil to germinate and to grow into what is meant to be and so in the process of that Jesus uh, models for us as to what it means to be a disciple. This first soil are the people who hear the word of God, who hear the message, who hear the gospel, but do not understand it. The second kind of soil, the rocky soil, can be interpreted as another step in the process of responding to the word of God. And so the rocky soil are the people who hear the word of God, who hear the message, who hear the gospel, and do not understand it, and, and actually understand it, but do not identify with the message. So they hear the word, they understand it, but they leave it at that. They don't go any further than that. They just uh, see it as something wonderful, something beautiful, but it's not for me. Now the third kind of, um, of soil uh, that Jesus describes is the one where the seed falls among thorns. And this can be uh, interpreted as being the person who hears the word, understands the word, applies or identifies with the word, but then forgets to actually live by the, by the message, by the invitation of what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be a citizen of God's kingdom. 
So in the first one, we have the ones who hear but do not understand. In the second one, we have the ones who understand but they don't identify with it. And on the third one, the seed among thorns is the one who hears, understands, and identifies with it, but they don't live according to the message. And these are the people that perhaps um, have read about Christ, have read the gospel, and say, wonderful, beautiful thoughts. But they do not allow the gospel to question them. They do not, do not allow the gospel um, to question their own priorities, uh, what is important to them. And now the fourth kind of ground is the ground where the seed falls into good soil and germinates, grows, and, and bears fruit. And so this fourth kind of ground will be the people that hear the word, understand it, identify with it, and then are transformed and live by it. Now, why, why do, do I, 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 I interpret it this, in this way? Because Jesus, when he talks about um, discipleship, basically mentions these four kinds of uh, uh, processes that need to take place in, in the person. It is not enough to simply hear the message of the gospel if you do not understand it. And if you do not even if you do not understand it, then it will not, will not go any further. But if you understand it and you do not identify with it, then nothing fruitful, uh, fruitful will come out of, out of it. And so for Jesus to be a disciple, to be a follower or a citizen of God's kingdom, it means to hear, to understand, to identify with the message, and then to live by it, meaning to allow the word to transform us, to challenge us. Um, to question us. And these are the ones that produce fruit. Fruit according to God's kingdom. And so perhaps the question for us uh, this morning is this. Where are you in this process of allowing the kingdom to come to you? To question you? To identify with it? And then to live by it? To live by the principles of the kingdom? And, which, and what are these principles? The principles of love, mercy, compassion, and the justice of God. And these are the ones that bear fruit for the kingdom. Let us join together in faith as we present our prayers to the Father. That the Lord may richly bless and be gracious to Pope Francis and all clergy as they continue to lead the faithful in truth and wisdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That Christ may guide the hearts and minds of those in positions of authority as they support policies that protect the dignity and sanctity of human life, we pray to the Lord. That those saddened by loss or burdened by sickness or poverty may find comfort in the shelter of God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those in this faith community may grow in their knowledge of the word and strengthen and strengthen of their faith through the grace of the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That those who have died may rejoice in eternal life. With our loving Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us bread of life and a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name. Right for the good of all his children. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion buried offerings of the law. Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more gave him thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this. All of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. We proclaim Amen. your death, O Lord, and Amen. profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church to spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With faith and confidence, we pray in the words that Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Jesus, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our, on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer one another Christ's. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord grant you the My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be, to be separated from you. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to, new, to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and the joy of our God. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed day.